And joining me now is Denver Mayor Mike Johnson. Mr. Mayor, thank you for being with us. And my first question is, what resources just generally do you feel like you need from the federal government right now amid this surge in migrants? Uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. I mean, I think we have been pushing really hard that there are three key items we need uh, right now. We definitely need the Congress to take action on $1 uh, for support for cities. That's key. I think the second is we need more work authorization for folks that are arriving to our cities. The biggest issue is we have folks here who want to work and are not able to work. And the third is we need their help on a plan for coordinated entry. So we don't have just the governor of one state deciding where all newcomers go, but actually a coordinated plan nationwide for all of our cities and states to be a part of the solution. And we think those three things can actually help us be very successful. We just need those three things from Congress to be able to succeed here at the city level. You've been pushing on the issue of work authorization specifically for some time now. You asked the White House last month for more authorizations. Have you gotten any response from the Biden administration or any indication that increased authorization might be part of the negotiations that are going on in D.C. around this border issue? Uh, you know, we're working hard on it. I think they understand it and see it. I met with Secretary Mayorkas months ago, and that was before he then took the step to grant temporary protective status for Venezuelans that came before July 31. That was a tremendous help for many of our Venezuelan uh, newcomers who arrived in August and September. The challenge is now, you know, we have 4,500 migrants in shelter tonight in Denver. We are the single largest recipient of migrants per capita of any city in America. And almost all those folks that have arrived now don't have access to that temporary protective status. So they don't have a clear path to work authorization. That makes it harder and harder for us to help them. And every time I see folks, they ask me the same thing, which is just, how can I get a job? All I need is access to work. And so we're optimistic that that's making progress. And we think there's should be an area of bipartisan support, nothing more un-American than having someone come to the country and tell them they can't work to support themselves once they get here. So we think whatever Congress decides is their admission policy, that's got to come with clear and immediate access to work once they arrive. We had the mayor of Houston on just before Christmas. We've had a lot of mayors who have been talking about this issue publicly. I'm curious what the conversations are like behind the scenes, the contact you have with your fellow big city mayors, all of you trying to address this issue from slightly different perspectives all around the country. Yeah, there's a lot of conversation and, and partnership, obviously. You know, right now, Chicago and New York and Denver together, uh, we've accepted more than 200,000 migrants. So we are the great majority of all of the uh, incoming traffic right now. So we have been in regular contact. But I've also been in a lot of contact with other mayors from other cities, some of whom have have less inflow of migrants right now and are willing to be a part of, of the coalition to find a better solution. So I think when, when you're a city mayor, you're nonpartisan, you don't have a a flag in the ideological battle in D.C. You just want to be able to run your city effectively. And what we need really is this work authorization plus resources and a coordinated plan. And we think that gets us a long way towards a successful strategy. But my understanding is this has become something of a political fight in Colorado where you've had some of the surrounding counties and communities very concerned about how Denver is handling this. Does the governor step in in that situation? I mean, talk to me about how this is working in your region, in your broader community. You know, the governor has been a great support for us, so we're lucky to have Governor Polis and his team has done a fantastic job to help us with resources and other supports. But we do know this is a regional issue. I mean, the major reason we're the top recipient for migrants right now is because we are the shortest and cheapest bus ticket north of El Paso. You come straight north on I-25 from El Paso, Denver is the first big city you hit. And so we think this does need to be a regional solution. We're talking to mayors uh, around the region. And frankly, we're hitting a point where there's not much else we can do. We have almost filled every single available hotel room in the city and county of Denver. And so we're over 4,500 migrants in shelter tonight. If that number continues to rise, we just wouldn't have the capacity in Denver to support it. So we are reaching out beyond our borders. And uh, we know people have questions and concerns, but I think they also don't want to see families and kids homeless in the streets of our cities. And so we want to make sure we find a solution that can avoid that. Well, to that end, you've said you've not considered turning away any of these buses of migrants that are coming to your city. But is there a point at which that's something Denver might have to do or something you might have to consider? Yeah, we're going to hit a capacity at which we just won't be able anymore to manage the amount of inflow. And so we're trying to, uh, to avoid that problem. But we know we can't keep growing at this pace. When I took the oath of office six months ago, we had about 400 migrants in shelter. We are more than 10 times that number right now. We've brought 35,000 through 
this year and remarkably been able to get 99% of them up and placed into housing or work or onward travel. And so we have been very successful, but now we're hitting a breaking point at which there's just not enough volume of work or of housing in the city to support this ongoing volume, not to mention the impact on city budgets. This could be 160 or $180 million of impact in our budget next year. That's almost 15% of the entire city budget. So those are numbers we certainly couldn't accommodate on our own without real help. And, and, and to that end, I mean, New York City's mayor, Eric Adams, they've been getting hammered by this. He told a reporter recently, he said something to the effect of not everyone that's coming into this country is pursuing the American dream. It sounded somewhat, somewhat Trumpian. I mean, I wonder how you feel like, if, does that narrative kind of play into the anti-immigrant argument that we're hearing from Donald Trump and some of his supporters? How do you view that? I mean, the, the thing that actually gives me hope about this scenario is that Every day, it's quite clear to me there is a path to solve it. I and mean, when I talk to migrants every single day, all they say is, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't need help or charity. All I want is a job. And at the same time, I get calls every day from employers and CEOs who say, hey, Mike, I hear there are a bunch of migrants just arrived. I want to hire them. Can I please hire them? So we have people here who desperately want to work. We have employers here who definitely want to hire them. We have a federal government that stands in the way of our ability to get them hired. I talked to a migrant on Friday who is here on an asylum claim and that asylum claim is set to be adjudicated right now in the year 2029. Uh, and so th that is not a path for success for him or for our city, but they do desperately want to work. We just want to give them the chance to get to work. All right, a message from the middle of the country to Washington. Help us get these people to work. Mayor Mike Johnson, thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.